All right, so we are talking now about lesson 5.2, the definite integral. Before we get too much into that, I uh, want to mention something uh, that I probably could have mentioned last video about uh, an application of this area under the curve thing. So you might see this come up uh, in some word problems, and I just want you to be aware of it. Let's say I had a velocity time graph. So those of you that have taken physics here, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. So let's say uh, this is going to be in feet per second, and time is going to be in seconds. So we'll just keep this pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five seconds. And let's just say I'm riding my bike. And I accelerate for the first two seconds. Remember, this is speed here, okay? So I'm increasing my speed, I'm accelerating, okay? So I'm up to 10 feet per second there. Then I'm going at a constant speed of 10 feet per second uh, for two seconds. And then I slow down to a stop um, at five seconds. So just a basic velocity time graph. One of the things that we do, if we want to find the total distance traveled, the total distance is simply the area under a velocity time graph, right? So this would be pretty easy for us to calculate our total area, or our, sorry, our total distance traveled. The easiest way here would be to break this up into some figures that we know, like a triangle and, sorry, two triangles and a rectangle. So in this case, we have a triangle, so 2 times 10 is 20 divided by 2 makes this 10 square units. 2 times 10 makes this 20 square units. And this is 1 times 10 divided by 2, this is 5. So if I add up 35, so I went 35 feet in the course of this um, this scenario okay uh, in reality I think we recognize that you can't make these abrupt changes to speed everything is curved okay so how do we do that when, when it's curved that's where calculus comes in okay so just want to point that out to start with uh, the next thing we're going to be focusing on is uh, the definite integral okay so, right here is a basic example of a definite integral, okay? There's something called an indefinite integral that if you read the book, or I should say when you read the book, they're going to talk about the indefinite integral as something they've already covered. Uh, we obviously haven't. I'll go back and talk to you more about that. Uh, but for right now, just know that the definite integral just means, so right here, and by definite, the difference between a definite and an indefinite integral when you look at it is just here, if they have numbers here, it's a definite integral. If there's nothing there, then it's an indefinite integral. But when we have a definite integral, it means the area under the function from in this case, zero to three. Okay, that's all it wants. So if we were to look at the graph of this function, two x minus one, y-intercept of negative one, slope of up to over one, you know, something like this. And then from zero to one, two, three, Okay, so there's my boundaries. So they want us to find this area here combined with this area down here. Okay, now this brings up another interesting point that you need to understand. Uh, notice some of this area is below the x-axis. That matters. If we talk about the net area, if they want the net area, that means that any area below 
the x-axis counts negative. Okay, so this is positive, but down here, this is negative area. Okay, and so we'd have to, if we were doing, finding the net area, we would take the area of this triangle, which, by the way, remember the formula for the area of a triangle, one-half base times height, and then we'd take the area of this triangle, and we'd subtract this one away from that one, because this one counts as negative. But sometimes they want total area. There are situations where it makes sense for that not to be negative and instead count everything as positive. All area is positive. So you just add those two areas for total area. Okay? So keep that in mind. Um, so I kind of mentioned or alluded to it that you're going to evaluate these definite integrals. Okay, And not this I should say next week, I'm going to teach you how to evaluate this with calculus. But right now, you're going to evaluate this using geometric formulas. So like I said, when we graph this, that was a triangle, and then another triangle below the x-axis, right? Right? And so you need to know the area formula for a triangle, and just use that. So you're going to be drawing pictures, you're going to be going back and doing geometry work, to get areas, right? So all of these will be doable formulas with geometry. So the area of a circle, just a reminder, pi r squared, if it's a semicircle, just divide that by two. Um, area of a trapezoid is one half base one plus base two times height. So you're gonna be using those to calculate areas of figures, okay? So just remember, Definite integral is just ask, asking for the area under the curve, okay? That's it. Shorter video now.